He is a self-described baseball bench warmer when asked to look back at his career. And I think he meant much more to his team than that. But Eric Burak joins me. He is EVP of production at the Famous Group. And this is the On to Something podcast. I'm Brian Family, a sports media podcast that differs from all the other ones out there. Because we don't just stay married to the nuts and bolts of the industry. Because what we do is only a part of who we are. And what Eric is all about is about to come out here. As we look at that personal side, and we find a beautiful coalescence of how he has used his past baseball playing days and those experiences along with fatherhood and translated those two dynamics into this trend-setting endeavor that he and his team are working on at the Famous Group, where they are creating downright mesmerizing content, visually euphoric experiences for sports fans. With all of that said, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe. A lot of cool content, as you'll see on my YouTube channel. Now, let's get to the conversation. Here it is, my chat with Eric. Eric, you wore a collared shirt for me. We've been dying to get this conversation going. Yes, we have Brian. finally made it happen. It's what happening. convinced you that now was the right time? Seeing the capper, John Kaplan, and some of my former Fox Sports alumni, Mike Roy, Jacob Ullman, and, and us having some great conversations and saying, I have to follow in their footsteps and, and be a part of this really fun experience. So there's a competition here between all of you. Hey, yeah. look what they did. And fa as far as you as a competitor, where does that come out the most? You know, it's a great question. Um, competition, being in sports uh, for my entire professional career, competitive by nature, uh, uh, played sports growing up, uh, played baseball at Santa Barbara City College. So big shout out to Coach Walker and the uh, mighty Vaqueros. Uh, but the transition into sports, uh, my first real job in this industry was at Fox Sports when they got the rights to the NFL and they had to really prove themselves, uh, even though some amazing folks uh, came in. But yeah, competitive by nature um, in this business is, is a thing. How did you get the call that you were going to work at Fox to start your career? That's funny. Um, so I was at, at Cal State Northridge, uh, radio, TV, film, uh, after, after SBCC, uh, focusing on, on sports broadcasting behind the scenes, um, had a few internships, prime ticket way back, uh, Bill McDonald, Larry Burnett were the, uh, the talent at the press box. Um, and I was tracking some opportunities at Fox sports, the only TV network that was in Los Angeles where I was living at the time and got really, uh, you know, really lucky to jump into the very first research group. Uh, but I actually got the call. From Larry Jones, who I, I saw just uh, retired and had an unbelievable run at Fox Sports, I got a call from Larry Jones during the O.J. Simpson slow speed chase uh, in June of, I guess it was 93, 94. Um, and it was, it was, it, it changed my life in, in many ways, uh, but got to start in the Fox Sports research group uh, for the first season of 94. So were you watching this speed chase happen and you just happened to be by the phone at the right time? How did yes. this unfold with yes, you getting that call? That's really exactly what happened. I mean, it was happening during right an NBA playoff game. Yeah. And then it was around the time that they were staffing up. Uh, and I had had a few interviews with the, the first ever research director was Frank Cooney, uh, former sports uh, journalist. And he had a really small group and we supported all of the, all of the broadcast teams. Uh, and I was assigned to Matt Millen and Dick Stockton. So the B crew, uh, the broadcast associate was Eric Shanks and the, uh, the producer uh, was, was Richie Zions, who's producing Super Bowls now for Fox Sports. So it's uh, pretty full, full circle. You just saw that there was so much talent in those formative young years of Fox. And you mentioned all those names and the amount of work and the impact that they've had on the industry goes without saying. And you even know, if I'm not mistaken, Eric, the number that you were as far as the, the hired employee of Fox, how did you stumble upon that number? You know, it's funny. I, I think employee 47, uh, 42, whatever the number was, um, I think Larry Jones you know, 
when Fox Sports started, it was a it was a family. It was small. We were at you know Sunset and Wilton. Uh, Ed Gorn and David Hill shared a desk. So you walked into their office and they were staring at each other the entire day. And you literally felt the energy. Uh, they're legends. I know, I believe both have been. Yeah, gratefully, you know, both of them of have show. been on here. So um, starting out and and seeing all the folks that cared, the folks that came from CBS, the people that were handpicked, you know, from other other places and literally being able to be on the ground floor of something uh, was really, really special. You look back now and you realize how special those early years were. At the time you were living out that side of you where you were young, you were just getting in the business. What if you were to play a role of foreshadowing? Because I look at you and what you're doing now at Famous Group is something where you are a bit of a trendsetter and what you're doing from a sports enhancement standpoint for the viewer, the in venue experience, and you're creating these yeah. this euphoria visually that is unseen. But if you were to take that trendsetter hat, foreshadowing, if you will, fortune teller, predicting the future, and say, when you were just getting in the business, what tipped you off that what you were experiencing was real history playing out? And that we all look back and we say, my goodness, everything or so much of where we are today in sports media was what happened in that small room or that small set of rooms where it was a small group of people and they just had these ideas and one day it would become an industry standard. Yeah. I mean, Fox Sports was all about, David Hill is all about being disruptive. Yeah. It was the score box. It was the glowing puck. I was there for for the glowing puck. And maybe it wasn't a huge win, but I know I had a lot of friends that loved watching hockey that really, really loved it. Um, but you see the way David went about his business. And it was something that was different. It was something that was going to change the game. And it was something that was going to make the viewing experience better. So you're right. I mean, you know, coming around with a bunch of stops in between, what we're doing at the famous group working with broadcasters with, you know, I'm now working with, we, we, we did two activations with Fox sports. We did a super bowl in Miami pre pandemic. We did the MLB all-star game last year with Denzel Washington at Dodger stadium. And I worked with Pete Machesca and Chuck McDonald and Jacob Ullman um, to really help be a part of, of the broadcast, but also working with, with baseball and the NFL. But I think watching how much, David Hill and Ed Gorn wanted to innovate. You know, one of the things, you know, scooter the talking ball with baseball. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I'm a huge baseball guy. Ed Gorn was like, how do we make the younger people watch baseball? And it it works. These things do work. And you see it with the Nickelodeon slime games. Uh, you know, now there's a lot of, of thinking about how they can reach a different demographic, not just for advertising, um, but that's what Fox Sports was about innovation. And it was cool to watch it happen. And no matter what idea you came up with, they were there to listen. And that was a really cool thing to be a part of. Who were the very first people in your life, Eric, that listened to you as a child and validated you and believed in you? You know, it's funny. Um, my father, you know, unconditional love, unconditional support, um, both from a you know, a standpoint of when you get your first job in the Fox Sports Research Group, and it surely doesn't pay a lot. But he said, you know, follow your dream and you're going to be in sports. Um, it's that unconditional support that you know you have behind you with your family. I mean, I had it with both my parents, but my dad was um, sort of in a totally different world in the sales business. And um, he gave me a lot of advice, a lot of you know, I would, a, a lot of, you know, times that we would, you know, have conversations about what we should do, um, uh, do next. I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do in sports. I knew I wanted to be in sports, um, loved, loved it and knew I wanted to, to make that my career. But how do you go about that? Luckily, there was a television network that started in, uh, you know, 15 minutes from my house. But, you know, I think having support from your family is so key. And I know I do that with, with my kids today. How do they support you now, your kids? Um, asking questions, um, being there for for each other, 
as, as a family. I think knowing that when you become a parent, and again, I had great parents, but when you become a parent, you are really living your life for others, uh, for these little humans, um, and making sure that you know everyone makes decisions every day. Are they the right decision? Maybe not, but you got to stand by and make a call, make a decision. And a lot of times it's collaborative, whether it's per personal or professional. And I think communication is the key to success in a lot of different businesses. And I think it is in, in our home as well. How have you communicated to yourself that with all the changes when it comes to your career, that there's one thing that I feel like has been at the bottom line, has been the common denominator of everything, and that is bold, you being bold and you being able to be flexible and versatile with all of these different stops that you've had, the boldness that you have, where did you find that and how has it allowed you to go on this magic carpet ride, if you will, of a career? Yeah, I appreciate that. And it's funny, I try to take a lot of time and talk to folks that want to come up in our business because people took the time to do that with me. Um, and I think that you really have to look and don't pigeonhole yourself. If you you know, started in marketing, you can go to production. If you started in production, you can go into sales. And I think that was a big thing for me. I was in the trucks for the first five years of my career with some of the best in the business. And I realized I kind of wanted to transition out I had met an awesome person named Norman Bear through Jeff Torborg, who was one of our announcers. Norman had introduced me to a sports agency, Beverly Hills Sports Council at the time. Uh, Dennis Gilbert had started the agency. I was a, a baseball fan, loved the sport. They were looking for a PR marketing guy. I didn't have a lot of PR marketing experience. But what I will say is when you're a broadcast associate at Fox Sports, you don't just do down a distance in a TV truck. You're the traveling PR person. You're helping with interviews. You're coordinating with teams. So I got a lot of experience in that respect. And I went to go work at a, at a sports agency that represented baseball players doing PR and marketing. Mike Piazza, Trevor Hoffman, Jimmy Rollins, Albert Pujols. And you talk about the boldness. I think I had people that supported me. I had folks that took a chance and said, hey, this kid knows baseball and he knows media, maybe he can help out and, and took a chance. And, and I was able to pivot into an entirely different, uh, you know, part of, of the sports world. You coming from a public relations background, how have you been the best PR person for yourself? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, um, you know, LinkedIn is a great tool to yeah. help, you know, be a, a, to help promote yourself. But I think, you have to be able to reach out to people that you, you know, maybe met once or twice, some folks that you know really well, and you have to advocate for yourself because a lot of times people are not going to do that, especially as you go from position to position, or even if, if you've stayed at a place, Jacob Ullman's been at Fox Sports for 25 years, and he continues to, you know, kind of move on up. Uh, I think that, you know, PR means a lot of things, uh, you know, social media uh, presence is is something making the right decisions, but also advocating and and learning, just trying to learn more about our business. Because as we talked about innovation, it's changed. I mean, we're, the famous group is doing mixed reality, and that wasn't a thing five years ago. So it's it's working with um, with the you know the great people that you work with and 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 keep pushing. But yeah, you definitely have to advocate for yourself. Um, and it for me going from production to PR and marketing, and then back to Fox Sports on a marketing and digital side, I, I kept all my contacts. I, I had stayed in touch with those folks and knew that they were then starting a whole digital uh, world and I wanted to be a part of it. And your contact list has only grown. I don't know if people still have Rolodexes anymore. That yeah. seems to be an archaic thing. But considering all that you're doing now, everybody seemingly all these pro franchises, sports franchises are coming to you for cool content. And with that innovation and with everything that you're doing and your team is doing, you're getting a lot of recognition. What kind of recognition brings the most meaning to you? That's a great question. And I think when I had first met John Slusser, who started the famous group back in 1998, 
sold a company, went to go work for Viacom. We met there when he was basically heading up sports and specials for, for Spike and then Paramount wow. Network. So he had told me about the famous group. I had seen a lot of the things that they you know, had done being innovators, really more in the in-venue space versus the broadcast space. But I think a lot of the things that we're doing now and getting the recognition, what means the most, honestly, is innovation. So the famous group was, was named one of Fast Company's top sports innovators. Sports Business Journal, stop, you know, top uh, sports innovation companies. Pushing things forward, both from an ex fan experience side, but also from a sponsor side. So we started doing mixed reality as a sponsored activation with Chipotle, with Mercedes Benz. And you're then letting the fan have a better experience, but you're also creating new ad inventory. That's really cool. Um, I think that the, the team that we have at the famous group now that constantly strive to innovate and, and push the envelope with our creative team led by a genius named, you know, Hamu Karadkar, I think we just keep pushing and and that is is meaningful. The, we started talking about innovation with David Hill and Ed Gorn and I'm yeah. in a company now that that's that's helping innovate. Well, that's so are you I was actually just going to go there and bring back what you're talking about with with your early experiences at Fox because one of the things that you mentioned from those early experiences is that every idea was shared. Now whether you you go with it or not, people were listening. David yep. Hill wanted to listen. He, Ed Gordon and the rest of your your crew at, at those early formative stages, everybody was listening to ideas. Now, again, maybe not everything is implemented, but nobody's getting shot down right. for for ideas. And so how much do you see in the inner workings of the communication of early Fox and the success in how that stacks up to what you're doing now and the amount of ideas that are coming through and being open to change and being open to, to trying something that's never been done before. Yeah, I think when you've spent the better part of close to 10 years, two different stops, production, and then I was in digital and marketing and I was on the RSN side, you know, you talk about a Rolodex. Um, it's just because <laughs> I'm older. Uh, I've worked with a lot of people, a lot of great people. Um, a lot of people that want to listen and 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 help push this business forward. And I think a lot of that has to, to do with the people that I've met along the way and the people at Fox Sports that did have literally, it sounds cheesy, but the open door policy. Yeah. You could have walked into Ed Gorn's office and 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 given him an idea and he would listen. Uh, and and I think that's how, you know, we are at the famous group as well, is sometimes a a team partner will call us and say, Hey, we have a, an underutilized area in our ballpark. Can you check it out and see what you can do? Um, and, and that's, that's a really exciting part of our business just because things are constantly changing and, and more people will watch on TV and we want to make sure people are still going to games. Your best ideas with the famous group, how do they show themselves? I think it's, you know, one of our managing partners, Andrew Isaacson, he's been with the company for 20 years, um, actually knows Fred Goodelli really well, who I know has been on, on your show. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with his relationships with teams and leagues that continue to come to us for ideas. We're at heart, we're a creative technology company. We have proprietary technology. Uh, we've come up with brand new creative tech and working with so many folks but a big part is, is literally having that team partner or the league to say, let's take a chance and do yeah. something new. But what, what other things have been done? What else can we do? And, and it's a big testament to our relationships and our, our team partners that want to want to try new fun stuff. How do you allow yourself to, to celebrate what you've done as a family? Like how, when, when you are able to broker a new deal with say a league, or a professional sports franchise and there's a lot of buzz as it continues to flow in with the famous crew how much let me say it like this how much time do you allow yourself to to sit back and experience what that feels like yeah i mean the work-life balance is is tough um i now live in denver and work in a home office um which is different but but better in the sense that 
you know, it helps with travel, it helps with communication, but the lines of when you start and stop are a little blurred. Um, so we really try to focus on on hours um, with our folks at the famous group. And I think we've been a part of a lot of really amazing projects. And I think with things like the Nickelodeon slime game or, or the major league baseball all-star game, I got to work with Denzel Washington, work with Denzel Washington. And, you know, thanks to, to Fox sports and, and major league baseball and Brian O'Gara. But I think sometimes you sit back and you might be in an Uber, you know, driving back from Dodger stadium. And you said, we just did something really cool, really different and helped honor Jackie Robinson at the major league baseball all-star game. So I definitely do some reflection on, on projects and I think we do a lot of communication pre, but also post about projects. What went well, what maybe didn't go well. Uh, but I definitely, I try to take time. And and if we're doing a, a project with Nickelodeon Slime, or we did something with the Transformers at the Final Four that my seven-year-old gets a part of and loves to see it, that that makes it even 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 better. How much of these and how many of these ideas have to pass the approval of your seven-year-old yeah or they it's, they hit air uh, you know transformers for sure uh, Opt optimus prime had to look perfect and and the nickelodeon <laughs> slime game but yeah i mean it's it's fun just to be able to be a part of something that's sports but also entertainment related but yeah he's he, he's he's got to pass the the mustard test with with him but how even generally if you look at it from a big picture perspective eric how much have you been better at your job and what you do now because you are a dad and because you see life at a different in, in a different lens than maybe you would elsewhere? I always say that. I think that when you become a father, and again, you know, going back to the top of our conversation, knowing that I had full support and a great relationship with my dad, um, I think that knowing you are there to support these kids, but also it, it just makes it so much more fulfilling, you know, whether they're a part of something or not. Um, but I think being a father is the ultimate, being a parent is the ultimate responsibility. And again, you know, we're making decisions every day. Um, today, there was a decision about, about what, you know, camp lunch was going to look like. And it was a whole conversation. But, um, you know, you're making the decision. And as they get older, they're a part of the conversation. But I do think it's a great point, Brian. I think being being a father um, definitely opens your eyes to a lot of different things. It also, I think, helps you become a better manager. Um, you know, for some of the younger people that are coming up in our business. And again, I'm not. You know, we're not making all the right decisions, but you are making a lot as a as a parent. What was the decision made on that that lunch? What did you guys end up doing? He opted for PB and J. Okay. Um, there was a ham and cheese on the table, uh, and and he went. PB and J. I think it was almond butter because the camp doesn't allow uh, peanut butter. But um, you know everything's a negotiation, uh, but it's fun. It's really really fun. And uh, PB P A B and J won out. Speaking of fun, I want to leave you with this last question, Eric. You come from a, a baseball playing background yourself. What was what would be most fun in me getting to watch you out there playing as a yeah. kid and even through college? where I really got to understand the kind of player you were out there? Um, it's been a while, and I was more of a, um, a player coach. Uh, but I had, I had great coaches growing up. That was another thing. Great coaches that were hard but were, were great. Uh, my little league coach was, was Bill Canote, and he stressed loving the game, enjoying the game, respecting the other team, but really wanting to win. And I know that, you know, the, the competitive part, but I think I wasn't the best player, um, but I tried to work really hard and be a supportive teammate. And a lot of times, especially in, in college, I was at the very end of the bench or the end of the bullpen. And I was just there supporting and, you know, just trying to do as much as I could when it was my time to, to get called on. In so many ways, what you just described is, is so parallel to what you're doing now, a supportive teammate and being that player coach and, and helping others come through the business and succeed. So it's fascinating as we wrap up this conversation, we kind of put a bow yeah. from, from beginning to end and where you are now to where you started with and how baseball, we mentioned how fatherhood 
has really impacted how you have been able to to work through the business. But even as a baseball player, there are so many parallels and the comparisons are real. And game recognizes game. You were a better baseball player, I'm sure, than you thought you were. And, and the game that you're playing now, you're doing a lot of winning with your team at the famous group. And not to mention you as a as a father, you're, you're winning over your seven-year-old as well, even if you didn't make the right call or you let That's it. him make the decision on the launch. But Eric, I'm so grateful for you. Thanks so much for Brian, allowing us to, to do this and, and take it a different route. Go beyond just the technology side of things and, and learn more about that personal side of you that not a whole lot of people know about. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very, very much.